Well, the story goes like this. I was uh, walking into my home after a very long overseas trip and had a vision that I was supposed to do something with the periodic table of elements. And I thought, jet lag, bad food. I mean, (laughs) who has these kind of visions? And so for me, whenever I get these kinds of ideas, I know it's always an invitation to learn something and discover something new. So this particular project took me on an incredible journey of discovery, starting at the Chemical Heritage Foundation in Philadelphia, researching the beginnings of chemistry, which was alchemy, all the way up to Bhutan and the Himalayas, where I had this incredible epiphany that the periodic table really was uh, Western cosmology. And And that came from looking at a lot of mandalas in Eastern tradition. And so I challenged myself to take the Mendeleev rigid gridded chart and transform it into an object of beauty that could be experienced through walking through it and also by listening to it. I must have researched this for at least two or three years, and then it took uh, about a year and a half to two years to build it. And so what I decided to do after a lot of research, I decided that I wanted to be inspired by the electron orbital patterns, because these are the most, one of the most ethereal parts of, of an element. And I also felt at a certain part that it needed to have sound. So what I decided to do was to set this periodic table up on a Fibonacci spiral. Everything in nature is is based on the Fibonacci spiral, that that sort of mathematical uh, progression. And I love the idea of a garden because gardens are always a place of order. They're also a place of contemplation. And I wanted people to have an experience of walking through this garden of orbital flowers. What I realized is what the Mendeleev chart represents is everything above, below, and everything in between. But we all stared at it in in high school, or at least I did. That was my last science course. And tried to understand what those numbers and letters meant. So why not create this object of beauty that could fill people with a sense of awe and wonder because basically when you look at the Mendeleev table, what you're looking at is everything that we are made up of as human beings and the world around us. And it was so amazing for me because I would have chemists (laughs) email me and say, thank you. I never thought of what I did in chemistry as beautiful, but after seeing your project, it gives me a whole new meaning for the work that I do. To me, that's so exciting because when you think about the notion of chemistry, it's all about transformation. And that's what I wanted to be the theme of that particular project. I'm really glad that we get a chance to talk about this piece because it was uh, when Rebecca showed this piece, that first talk that she gave that, that I happened to be at, that I really had the sense, okay, we're we're dealing here with someone with really an extraordinary skill and vision. And this is something, you know, she's doing really great and, and interesting and deep work. And so that was what really got me, first got me excited about Rebecca's work. And maybe I'll explain that a little bit. In the, the periodic table, the, th- the word periodic is what's really important, right? So, you know, every column in the periodic table, all the elements in it have similar characteristics column by column. This elements in this column are similar to one another, and then in this column they're similar to one another. And row by row, they grow in size and complexity. So that uh, periodicity with this modification of size and complexity is part of what is exciting to a scientist about the periodic table, that everything in the world is made up of these things that seem so different, but you can arrange them this way and you really see that as things grow, as, as atoms grow in size, they acquire complexity, but they also certain properties repeat over and over and over. So that's something that is fundamentally understood by a scientist looking at the periodic table. And that 
the kind of joy that you take in that simplicity within complexity is part of the scientific experience in general. And what I love about Elemental Garden, one of the many things I love about Elemental Garden is it really captures that, right? So the idea of the spiral, you're going around and around, right? So you keep going around and around, but as you go around, you get to a slightly different place, right? You get a little farther out and farther out and farther out. And the figures that Rebecca had made that were uh, symbolizing the elements grew in their physical complexity, and yet still they're within this essentially periodic structure. And so somebody who knew nothing about chemistry walking through there might still get that set of emotions, might still appreciate, wow, I really appreciate the repetition, but the repetition with growth and the repetition with, with change and complexity and just get a sense of, of joy and excitement from that without even knowing the science. To capture that and make that sort of the fundamental part of an exhibition without forcing people to encounter things about science that scare them, I just thought was really revolutionary. Seeing that piece was really, really exciting for me the first time and every time actually. Actually, you don't know this, but I've taken on the coronavirus <laughs> at the moment because it was so terrifying for me when I first started realizing it and reading about it. So I'm working with a heliophysicist, a quantum physicist, a, math a biological mathematician who deals with the, the geometry of the coronavirus, um, and a microscopist from uh, Anthony Fauci's lab. So, you know, it, it's, it's bringing together this incredibly rich group of scientists that would probably not come together under any other circumstance except to collaborate with an artist and to create something that will inspire people to think about the coronavirus in a very different way. So that, that's where I, what I've been up to since we last spoke. <laughs>